as you guys have seen already my original setup video that I'm linking right over here I explain what I had and um, I want to make another one to make it more clear exactly what I have and the difference between different FPV setups for example between the one that I have and the Phantom Vision which runs in a completely different system first of all what I have as you guys can see and you guys probably have already seen is a Phantom 1 and a Phantom 2 with my Phantom 1 I have the dual battery setup for longer flight times I also have the immersion RC the video transmitter this is what transmit the video signal and this is the Spironet antenna that works really well I have a Zemus gimbal on, this also, on it also with the GoPro battery these are the stock 2200 milliamp batteries and they give me between 11 between 11 and 12 minutes flight time and that's being safe you could go a little bit more but I wouldn't recommend it now for longer flight times between 13 and 15 minutes I use these batteries right over here attached on the battery and a dual battery tray these are the Zippy 2700s from Hobby King these batteries work really well and like I said it gives me between 13 and 15 minutes flight time do not confuse them with the blue pack Zippies the yellow pack are the lightest ones than the blue pack ones so I recommend you guys get these and get the 20 25C rating ones. If you get the 35C, they're heavier. The higher the rating, the C rating, the heavier they are. These stock Phantom batteries are 20C, so 25 is more than enough. And like I said, they're lighter. So they work really well. Do not put anything more. That's according to my experience. Anything heavier than 2700 and that, that are not these type of yellow pack why because the phantom becomes way too heavy this is as much as the limit that you could put on this phantom one as you guys know from a previous video also i have a easy uhf receiver inside this phantom because the software lets you put ppm mode meaning that you could put any type of receiver that you would like so i put a long range uhf system this is an easy UHF with the Fotaba 9 cap. I'll explain to you the difference between the distance on this and my Phantom 2 with the stock remote. But this gets pretty good range. But believe it or not, the stock one has performed better than the easy UHF. I'll explain to you, I'll go into that after I talk about the Phantom 2. This is my Phantom 2, as you guys know, you have the on and off switch, the cartridge battery. I also have a 600 milliwatt transmitter with another Spironet antenna. And I also have a Zemus gimbal, a two, two axis Zemus gimbal. And pretty soon I'll be installing a three axis gimbal on it too. And this is a stock remote. This is where I would put the FPV monitor and top of right here or on this one on top of right over here so let me finish talking to you about the FPV setup and I explain to you about distances between these two systems right over here this is the video receiver this is the UNO 5800 from Immersion RC for the new people out there to FPV this is the video transmitter which transmits the signal to this and this is the patch antenna a 13 dvi patch antenna as you guys know these patch antennas come with a little screw and when you want to put it in here it's really hard to get your fingers in there you can't pretty much you have to use a plier and be gentle with it I have a friend that he 3d printed this little star and as you can see you just put it in there and you rotate it and it's in place perfectly if you guys want to know how to get those little 3d printed stars just let me know on the video 
on the video comments or in my Facebook page. You must be wondering now, how many of these do I have? Well, I only have one because I have it on channel 7 for, for the Phantom 1 and on channel 8 for the Phantom 2. Yes, there's a button right here that you could change between 8 channels. So that's the video receiver. That goes hooked up through here to the back of it. This has two, out two outputs. And then I plug it in to the back of my FPV monitor. Yes, I do prefer monitors than goggles. That's just my preference. And I have a splitter and I plug it right in here. You must be wondering why do I have a splitter? Well, also, I like to record most of the times with my DVR. This is a ready-made RC DVR and it has its own little screen and everything as you can see right over there. I plug it in, this is the video signal, to the video in right here on the side. And I have it all clamped up to this remote either right over here or to the side right over here like another little TV you could say. That records the OSD information. That's what the DVR is for. To record the OSD information. And as you guys have seen on my videos, probably, on one of the screen on some of the, my videos on the PIP screen, the little screen, the black one, that's what this is recording all the information. You could go to ReadyMade RC to get either the DVR or also the, this uh, FPV monitor that works really well for me. I'll be posting all the links to everything on the video description. Or you guys could also just Google ReadyMade RC 5 inch monitor or ReadyMade RC DVR and you guys will be able to get that. This is a nice little pouch that it comes with. You could put it around your belt or whatever way you would want to put it. Now, you guys must wonder, how do I power the TV and how do I power the video transmitter? Well, the video transmitter, I have a Velcro right over here. Put it right in there. That's how it goes. And to power it, I have this cable. I have male deans to two, to two female deans that each one, this one, has for the TV right over here. And the other one goes to the bottom right over here. And I either put the battery here or I put it on the back of the remote that I have some Velcro here that interferes less when the battery's not next to the easy UHF. So that's how I have that set up. Now let's talk about the video test, the range test, I'm sorry, that I did. Also with video and remote distance. How far did I go? As you guys see on this video that I'm putting here on the side, I went to the beach in Naples because some friends were going there and I took my phantoms and I decided to see how far I could go. Well, as you saw in that video link that I posted right now on the side, if you guys saw that video, I went with the stock transmitter, 2.8 kilometers. On the DJI website, this transmitter is rated for 1,000 meters which is one kilometers so I went 2,800 and I could have gone further but when I was flying towards the ocean against the wind I was flying and I wanted to turn around and see and show you guys the ocean and I kind of mentioned it on the video I went ahead the video signal was coming straight to me like this and the antenna there's one here and another one here for the remote on the legs. Well, when I turned around, it kicked into failsafe a little bit. And when I saw all that ocean, I said, okay, it's time to come back. But I could have gone further, but I just didn't because I was 2.8 kilometers in the water. And um, well, I could have gone further, so I was really happy with the stock remote. It has really good range. You do not need to get the UHF system like I have here. Why? Well, I did the same test. I did the same test with this remote. And uh, 
I got 2.7 kilometers and the FS, the fail safe on my OSD was kicking in a lot more. It kicked in only once with the stock remote, but with this one, it kicked in a lot more. And I usually have more problems, more fail safes with this one that kick in than with this one. So I'm gonna be using primarily most the Phantom 2, the Phantom 2 with the stock remote because the easiness of just changing the battery back and forth, the power switch and a lot of other things. So I really like the Phantom 2. Don't get me wrong, the Phantom 1, I've used it quite a bit. I've taken it to California as you can see on my videos and many other places and it's been a really good quadcopter but this is a lot more easy to use. Now, to explain to you guys about the Vision and these. What is the difference on the FPV systems between the Phantom Vision, the Phantom FC40, and the regular Phantom? Let's not get confused. Phantom 1 and the FC40 is pretty much a Phantom 1 with a Wi-Fi camera that runs on 2.4 gigahertz, meaning the FPV system on the Phantom FC40 runs on a Wi-Fi FPV system. So Wi-Fi, as everybody knows, runs on 2.4 gigahertz. And the remote on the Phantom 2 and also on the Phantom 1, not the FC40, just the Phantom 1, when it comes stock, is also 2.4. So for the Phantom FC40, and for the Phantom Vision, the first version, and the Phantom Vision Plus, they come with 5.8 remotes that run on 5.8 gigahertz. And their FPV system that runs on Wi-Fi, whether it's the Phantom Vision Plus, the Phantom Vision, the version one, or the Phantom, the FC40, they run on Wi-Fi, FPV that runs on 5.8 gigahertz. So let's not get that confused. The remotes that come with Phantom Vision 1, Phantom Vision Plus, and Phantom FC40, the remotes are 5.8 gigahertz because the FPV system, the Wi-Fi runs on 2.4 gigahertz. Now, the FPV system that I have runs on 5.8 gigahertz. That's why the remote here is 2.4 gigahertz. And I believe, and quote me if I'm wrong, I believe the FPV system that I run is FM. It's not Wi-Fi based, as everybody knows. So, a lot of people are getting Phantom Visions. And I think that's a pretty good deal because it comes with a camera, comes with everything. But there, the disappointment is that it only goes 700 meters. Well, as comparison to what I've done completely stock here, I've gone, my record so far is 2.8, which is 2,800 meters. There's a big gap in there. There's some people that if you Google on Google that I'm gonna be showing you right over here on the side on this little video here if you Google FC40 or Phantom Vision range extend or how to extend the range on Phantom FC40 or how to extend the range on Phantom Vision there's plenty of Vimeo videos or YouTube videos showing you how people have changed the antennas on the remotes and how people have changed the antennas on the Wi-Fi repeater that comes with the with the Phantom Vision and the Phantom Vision Plus. They've changed those antennas and there's people that say they've gotten more than 5,000 feet which is a mile and there's people that have gotten more than 2,000 um, 2, meters which is a mile and a little bit more so there is plenty of information that you could get from the internet on how to extend your range on these 
different phantoms. Also, the, the UHF system that I run here is pretty expensive and as I told you already, I get much better results with the stock system. If you're not happy with the ring that it comes with, there is also, if you Google, you could change these antennas to a higher dB rating and you could get a lot more. But I would not recommend for you to fly out four kilometers, five kilometers, because there's always a trip back. And like when this test that I did on the beach, I made sure which way the wind was blowing because I wanted to make sure that I wanted to fly against the wind. So on the way back, the wind was with me. If you saw in my video on the speed of the IOSD, I was flying at about 7.5 meters per second when I was going away from the beach and on the way back I was hitting about between 15 and 20 meters per second. You always have to keep an eye on the battery consumption because if you don't have enough battery and you're going too far you're gonna lose your phantom. And, th and that's pretty much all the information that I have with the phantoms. If you have any other questions I'm glad to help you on my DJI Copters page on Facebook. I've been helping a lot of people. I like when you guys send me messages because there was one time when I knew nothing about these things and just Googling and YouTubing, I came to be where I am right now. I mean, I'm not a know-it-all, but I know enough to help you guys out. You guys have a great day.